1776, America needed a way to move people and goods throughout the country. Early on, America did this by utilizing wagons and horseback. But in 1827, transportation in the United States would change forever, evolving into one of the largest rail networks in the world. Inspired by Heron Rail Video and 7 Idea Productions, we will take a look at both real and fictional routes in Trains Simulator while discussing the history of the lines involved as well as the communities they serve. Then and now, from the legendary Pennsylvania Railroad in the East, to the Santa Fe and later BNSF in the West, along with going through the Midwest and Appalachia coal country. From the mountains and the plains, from sea to shining sea. This is Rails of America, a Trains Simulator series. Wawasi, a small town in Indiana that was once and still is home to a lot of railroad history. It is also home to the Gunnison Division of the Norfolk Southern starting in Gunnison and making its way west all the way to Wee Ride. In 2023, we would travel to the Gunnison Division of the Norfolk Southern to capture this unique part of Indiana railroading. While relatively flat by the standards of most, the region is also fairly hilly while also being complemented by wildflowers, which would make for perfect backdrops for panning shots. We'll see manifests meet off of single track main lines. Coal trains battling the grades to Kokomo Power Plant. Plus trackage right freight from CSX and even the Hiwassee Terminal Railroad which interchanges freight with Norfolk Southern. We will even take a look and even chase a train over the CSX Vendelia subdivision between the towns of Demont and Bloomfield. Join us now as we use the Indiana and Western to depict Rails of America's first fictional route, the Gunnison District, Norfolk Southern's G-Line. The Norfolk Southern G-Line is roughly 25 miles from end to end, at least with just NS rails. When we add the CSX Vendelia subdivision, we now have 32 miles of track. Coming off of the CSX in Bloomington, Ohio, the Norfolk Southern G-Line starts in the namesake town of Gunnison, Indiana. From Gunnison, the railroad continues west through Villaro, Kiwana, Wawasee, and finally, DeMott. From DeMott, the railroad continues west towards Chicago. Although the line technically ends at the Rewa Y just outside of DeMott, it is no longer a point of interest for Norfolk Southern. However, CSX uses the line to get onto its Vendelia subdivision, heading north. This division of the Norfolk Southern, however, 
does not look how it did 72 years ago when it was operated by the Nickel Plate Road. Back in the age of steam, places like Gunnison had a lot more tracks in the areas, including the Nickel Plate Road's roundhouse. Back in the days of the NKP, it wasn't uncommon to see a Berkshire hauling a fast freight up to 70 miles per hour. Or a pair of Alco PAs on a cracked passenger train also running at 70 miles per hour. The Nickel Plate Road Hudsons were also a common sight in the area, pulling trains such as the Nickel Plate Limited. The Westerner or the New Yorker. Fairing trains over nickel plate trackage such as the Lake Erie and Eastern's Lake Erie Limited. One might even see them working alongside the Mikados and Berkshires on freight trains. However, the nickel plate road wasn't the only one running in the area. With trackage rights over the Nickel Plate Road, the Pennsylvania Railroad also served the line, running west from Gunnison to Kokomo Power Plant, which both the railroads served. After the diesels fully replaced the steam locomotives, the Nickel Plate Road continued to serve the line until 1964, when it was purchased by the Norfolk and Western. After the N&W's takeover, the line continued to see many changes, such as the rise and fall of Penn Central, the formation of Conrail, and finally, the merger of the N&W and the Southern to create Norfolk Southern. After Conrail was split in 1999 between CSX and Norfolk Southern, the line was ran the same ever since. July 20th, 2023, finds our camera crews on the ground on the Norfolk Southern Gunnison District. Our crews started in Gunnison, where the Norfolk Southern has its engine facility and major yard set up. A locomotive repair facility and a car repair facility also make up the yard. Also in Gunnison is the old Nickel Plate Road Depot, which has been turned into a museum for tourists. Our first train of the day was Norfolk Southern 9780 West, auto rack empties bound for Chicago. As an added bonus, BNSF 751 trails second out on the consist. The Kokomo power plant still regularly sees coal trains from both NS and CSX. This morning, however, Norfolk Southern 4736 East is the one hauling coal empties through Gunnison out of Kokomo. Later on in the day, a pair of GP38-2s started switching job to the Gunnison Scrapyard. 
the two locomotives will drop three gondolas off at the scrapyard for unloading. After delivering the scrap gondolas, the jeeps will proceed back into Gunnison Yard preparing for the next delivery. Moving just outside of Gunnison, just across the way from the Thompson family farm, CSX 5482 West begins its trek over the G-Line towards the Vendelia Sub, the first CSX train of the day. As the train was finished passing, we took note of the intermodal equipment and auto racks that made up the rear end. These cars are likely headed to Waycross, Georgia where they will likely be sent to CSX's hub in Jacksonville, Florida. After the CSX Manifest, we catch Norfolk Southern 1132 East making its way to Bloomfield.
at Duke Street, we catch 4217 West with a splash of UP Armor Yellow trailing second and third out on the consist. Not far from Duke Street, we find ourselves not too far away from Vincent's Feed Corporation. This corporation is the one that many farmers and ranchers buy from in the region. In a classic nickel plate road scene, Amtrak's Blue Street passes the feed mill, Bluefield Bound. Ten minutes after the blue streak, Norfolk Southern 4464 West rolls through with coal loads bound for the Kokomo power plant.
Valaro is home to the Valaro Oil Refinery. While the town itself was established in the late 1800s, the refinery itself wasn't opened until the 1940s. Just like the G-Line itself, the refinery has seen many changes over the past 70 to 80 years. Although the yard looks dead as of right, that will all change in a few minutes. As we waited for NS 44V, NS 9731 West passes Villaro with a manifest. Ten minutes later, 44V arrives. 44V is daily ethanol empties bound for Valaro to be loaded and sent back east to Altoona, Pennsylvania. Here, the train will be split into sections to accommodate for its large size. The head end power will be cut, put onto fuel racks, and jeeps will switch the train into the refinery to be loaded. After 44V's arrival, we will continue our journey west to Demott. Just east of Kiwano, we catch CSX 5494 East leading M373. The train is bound for Bedford, with its final destination being Cumberland, Maryland. In Kiwana, NS 3624 and 4464 return from Kokomo Power Plant with some empties. Some of these cars were on the train they had hauled earlier this day.
after NS3624 rolled through with their empties, another large coal train was bound for the power plant, this time being CSX7562 West. Because Kokomo Power Plant is primarily served by Norfolk Southern, CSX only sends a train once a week to the power plant. Shortly after the CSX coal loads, SD40-2-3387 rolls through Kiwana with center beam empties. These center beams are bound for Gunnison Yard where they would be switched onto other trains. In between Kiwana and Wawasi, the railroad goes down to a single track. After falling under NNW ownership in the 60s, the railroad found problems with Main 2 and thus ripped it up. In the field behind the main line, we would set up for a pan shot to catch a stack train, being led by AC44C6M 4298. After catching word of a train meet, we went to the siding to wait for the westbound train, which was 8058 West, a manifest bound for Chicago. The train it would be waiting for would be 9977 East. With the all clear to run over the single track main, 9977 East comes into view. Being led by three C40-9Ws, they waste little time racing the train through Kiwana.
With 9977 East past the Kiwana siding, 8058 West resumes its journey to DeMont. Moving to the bridge itself, we would see an NS manifest traversing the bridge from the Wawasi side of the river. A BNSF ES44C4 brings up the rear of the train as a DPU. On the Wawasi side of the bridge, another surprise was waiting for us. NS8100, the Nickel Plate Road Heritage Unit, was hauling an intermodal bound for Chicago. Hauling fast freight just as the Berkshires did in the 1950s. Although not moving as fast as the Berkshires once were, the crew still gave us a show as they gave us a horn blast coming off of the bridge. Now on the Wawashi side, just outside of town, NS8149 West has another coal train in tow for Kokomo Power Plant.
With the passenger trains of the nickel plate gone, Wawasi still sees passenger service to this very day in the form of Amtrak's Indianian, which stops here daily in both directions. As the Indianian continues to load passengers, BNSF 6866 East leads a CSX unit oil train to Bedford. its passengers aboard, the Indianian continues its trip to the Windy City. As the train departed, the crossing suffered a minor malfunction. But after a couple of seconds, everything went back to normal. West of Wawasi, NS4036 East tears through a railroad crossing with one of the highest priority intermodals with global containers in tow.
2.7 miles away from Wawasi lies the Norfolk Southern's interchange point with the Hawassi Terminal Railroad, which serves towns along its right-of-way to the north and south. The short line and Norfolk Southern have been interchanging traffic with one another since the early 1990s. Waiting for the HTR transfer train are two GP38-2s. As they waited in the interchange, NS4428 West races by at track speed with well cars and auto racks in tow. Shortly after, HTR GP50s numbered 5121 and 5120 pull into the interchange. They will leave the train of empty coil cars, hoppers, and tank cars and move to track 3, where the NS Duo will couple to the train. While the crews at the interchange were continuing with their orders, NS 9781 East rolls through, picking up speed as they get closer to Wawasi.
As 9781 East finishes passing, it reveals the Jeep duo starting the movement to collect their consist. Now tied onto their train and a brake test conducted, the crew of 5578 throttles up, starting the return trip to Gunnison Yard. As the two HTR GP50 start their journey back home, two NS motors and a UP Tier 4 C45AH make their way to Kokomo Power Plant to collect empties to bring back east. Before moving to our next location, we would see HTR's office car special crossing over the Norfolk Southern, being led by HTR GP7-6103.
Moving to a rock cut behind the 77th and 68th Street crossings, CSX 3368 West thunders past with a massive manifest in tow. Staying in the rock cut, we see the power move from earlier, now with UP2710 in the lead, with over 7,000 feet of empty coal hoppers tied to their couplers. Another familiar number in the form of NS8149 is now pushing on the rear of this empty coal drag. With permission from Kokomo Power Plant as well as Norfolk Southern, TRK Studios was allowed to send a drone up to catch some footage of hoppers being unloaded.
Leaving the power plant, we find our way to San Riku Street, where the first of two trains would pass, this one being 9652 East. After 9652 East, NS7578 West comes into view with a relatively short train. We would set up in a field just outside of Damat to catch panning shots of the train, their horn blaring at every grade crossing. After arriving in Demott, we would see NS 7646 East lead a grain train through town.
Following the grain train, NS 4297 West comes into DeMont with another auto rack stack mixed consist. The CSX Vendelia sub joins the Norfolk Southern Gunnison District at the Rewa Y. The line can only handle one large train at a time due to it being mostly single track and with a siding long enough to hold only one train that exceeds 9,000 feet. Coming off the sub now is CSX 5267 East with a line of empty auto racks. Our final train of the day would be a westbound intermodal as it rolls on into the sunset. The following morning we were back in DeMott to chase CSX M122 over the Vendelia subdivision. NS 4753 West was due through DeMott first with a large train warranting distributed power.
Running a little behind, M122 races through Demont. M122 is a daily manifest from Bedford to Detroit, Michigan via the NS Gunnison District and the CSX Vendelia sub. We would follow the train to the sub's end in Bloomfield. As M122 passes, it runs off the main one and out of the path of an NS auto rack. And with that, the chase was on. Coming off of the Gunnison District, we first see M122 on CSX rails passing the Rewa Lake. With the line having a maximum speed of 20 miles per hour, it made it fairly easy to get ahead of the train. 7297 and the rest of M122 rolling to view, passing GP406134 at the Purlington Warehouse. After crossing over the Pakota River, M122 reaches Pakota Siding. The train will wait here for eastbound I-001. Today, M122 is just over 5,000 feet, so I-001 would have to stop at the other end of the siding to let M122 pass. After 10 minutes pass, we see I-001 approach the north end of Pakota Siding.
I-001 itself was just short enough to fit in the siding, meaning the train would block our view of M122 departing Pakoda. With an all clear given to it by the dispatcher, M122 continues its journey to Bloomfield. Arriving in Bloomfield, we take a few minutes to take in and appreciate the community and its people. Although Bloomfield is not as it was back when the Pennsylvania Railroad served the line, it continues to hold up its charm with a population of around 50 to 100 people.
going off of the CSX Bloomfield Yard is a rail trail that was once a part of the PRR. A decommissioned semaphore signal still watches over the yard 80 plus years later. As a pair of SD40-2s idle in the yard, M122 rolls through town concluding our first episode of Rails of America. We hope you guys enjoyed our first episode of Rails of America looking at the Norfolk Southern G-Line. If you guys did enjoy the video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel and following us on our social medias to not miss a single update on the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.